There is some growing noise that the Tar Heels will only take one more transfer commitment instead of two. Is this the right play, Coach Rob? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined by our guy, Coach Bill Robinson, the head coach of the Milligan University Buffaloes men's basketball team, as well as a two-decade veteran of the Carolina summer basketball camp. You're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen or watch. Special shout out to all you everydayers out there, as well as all the members of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community. So glad that you're all here. If you're not part of that community, we'd love to have you. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Going to be a fun show today with some interesting conversations between Coach Rob and I. We're going to look at building bridges rather than burning them in recruiting in case guys come back around and what that could mean for transfer portal stuff. We're going to have story time with Coach Rob. Love that, that we get to do when he's on. But first, Coach. The, the topic du jour, I guess a lot of this week has been all the offers the coaching staff has been making uh, for class of 25 and getting into the class of 26 a little bit. But we want to back up now to this year and working to finish off the roster for 24-25. For quite a few weeks now, we've been talking about this hope and expectation that Carolina will add two more players in the transfer portal to help beef up and fill out the front court. Coach, there is growing tide that the Tar Heels will actually only take one. I've seen reports both from Tar Heel Illustrated and, and Inside Carolina to that end. Uh, coach, you know, I, I'm not asking you to, to speak positively or negatively about the staff. I just want to know, from your standpoint as a coach, would you feel comfortable with your front court depth with just one more, uh, one more signee, or would you prefer to have two? I think it's a it's a philosophy issue. Uh, I also think it's a level issue. Like for me at my level, I'm not worried. Uh, I, I want as much talent as I can, so we're going to get as much depth as we can. If we can get one more great player, we're going to do it. Um, we it's very hard for us at our level to say no to a really talented player. If the kid's that good, we're going to find a way to get him here. Uh, in, in Coach Davis's situation, he's looking to to try to build not just for this year, but for the future. So he doesn't want uh, too much talent that would maybe send somebody into the portal next year that he really wants to build. It's almost impossible now to build a program. You're, it's, it's year to year. It's team to team. And he, he wants to do it the right way. There's a lot of guys out there not doing it the right way. Um, I had a conversation with a buddy the other day. Uh, we were talking about a couple of years ago, and I'm not going to tell you the program, but uh, it was a big, you know, power five program. And uh, he brought in six transfer guys in one year and told every single one of them that he was going to be the guy. We're going to put the ball in your hands. You're going to make all the plays. We're, we're going to, and he was not going to do that. No. And we see all these guys who are making quick moves and, and they're signing, you know, a, a guy goes and visits and they're signed immediately. Uh, I'm not saying everybody's doing it that way, but there's guys that are, pro, uh, you know, promising stuff that they really can't keep. And that's part of why we love covering this program and doing what we do because as coach Robinson knows firsthand because of his relationship with coach Davis, uh, he is a man honest and good to his word. He doesn't want to commit to something that he shouldn't commit to, to a player, all of these kind of things. And so while we would like to see maybe things move more quickly, I'm so at the end of the day, so appreciative of how he handles it. So coach putting yourself into coach Davis's shoes, there is this debate that I think rages, not just in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but across the college basketball landscape at the division one level. And I guess quite specifically at the high major division one level, how would you manage this idea of, hey, we want to bring in the best available talent in the transfer portal versus the potential negative locker room issue of 
recruiting over these existing players that you have like Jalen Washington and Zayden High and others. How, how would you go about balancing that in this type of scenario? It, it's getting more and more complicated. I saw uh, Penny Hardaway make a comment this week about these guys are asking for NIL money. Guys are making more money than his assistants are making. And now, so your, your balance of the power is all out of shift. And um, you have to be careful about guys who are coming in just asking for a dollar amount. And then there's got to be talk in the locker room. Hey, what am I making compared to what you're making? And and that can't be a good thing. Um, I think the Hawkins kid came in asking for a lot of money if he were to come out of the draft. And I don't think Hubert likes that. I don't think he wants that to be the focal point. He wants it to be team. He wants it to be us. He wants guys to check their ego at the door. He wants mm-hmm. guys who want to win. Uh, and it's an interesting question. I've got part of this going on right now, but ask a guy saying, hey, you know, if you had an opportunity to be an All-American average 25 a game or we could win the conference, which would you choose? Hmm. And in today's game, there's kids that will say, I'd rather be the All-American because it's about me. And that will lead for something down the road for me, maybe bigger than what college is. But um, it's not about the team anymore. And it's, it's sad to see. Uh, it's funny. Penny Hardaway, you mentioned him. His own son transferred this offseason is going to St. Mary's, Ashton Hardaway. Uh, it's just part of this landscape. And coach, you know, we've what you just said there at the end of that statement, we so often, particularly at, at at the college level, less so in the NBA, where it is almost seemingly more about the individual, for so long in college, it is that old cliche about the name on the front of the jersey. But in this era of player empowerment and NIL, and there's so much of that that's good, but when we make it about the autonomy for the player, when we give them um, their own agency, I guess at the end of the day, it's not that shocking that they're going to make self-promotive decisions at times over team promotive decisions. Does that, I I don't necessarily think that I like that, but I totally understand it. Right. Yeah. We have a, we have a girl in the high school local here who just signed an NIL deal with a shoe company. She's a rising junior in high school. Uh, I, I saw a kid the other day that we recruited, went to a D2. He's not starting at his school. He just signed an NIL deal. So you're sitting there going, are they just, you know, and part of it was this shoe company sponsored her AAU team. That's how she ended up with the NIL deal. What that deal means, who knows? It could be free shoes, you know, and, and we just make it sound like an NIL deal. I don't know exactly what it is, but we've had guys at our level ask during the recruiting process, you know, do you guys do anything? And maybe that's something we need to go out there and start raising some money and say, hey, even if it's just a local restaurant that gives our guys, you know, one free lunch a, a week, you know, our guys would think that's pretty cool. And we could advertise that we have NIL money or at least NIL situations. But yeah. uh, it's definitely something even at our level we need to talk about if we're going to uh, continue to, to try to win games and win conferences and, and hopefully, go, you know, beyond. We're going to have to start looking into some of that stuff. Coach, one of the arguments uh, for that that from the people that have that often say like, "Hey, we shouldn't bring anybody else in," or "I like the idea of just bringing one more in," and and frankly, there's more people of that mind than I thought there would be, and I, I want to respect that viewpoint. Um, that say, Isaac, I I don't like the idea of bringing in two more transfer portal guys because there's something to be said for developing the guys you already have instead of just bringing in maybe what's perceived as a hired gun, which I can understand that. Coach, where where are you in that mindset of like, hey, you know, maybe there is something to be said for if you're seen to not be recruiting a ton of transfer portal guys, if you're seen as a program that wants to continue developing from within and growing that way, that maybe younger guys are going to want to come play for you and stick around. What's your thought with that? I really think there's got to be balance. Uh, John Wooden talked about balance all the time. And he was talking about the physical balance. He talked about balance between offense and defense. Talk about balance in your life when it comes to uh, everything that you do, even your sleep and things like that. So balance is important. But I think the balance in, in recruiting high school kids, recruiting kids that you can develop over a period of time, but also maybe finding, when you're talking about a hired gun, every time somebody says that, I think of Brady Manick. He wasn't just a, a you know a, a hired gun, but he was a guy who fit the program. He was the right personality. He was obviously the right talent. Um, but th- that's the balance of, that I'm looking at. You want somebody who fits the mission of what you're trying to do. And Hubert's just not going to take anybody. He wants somebody who's going to fit, somebody he wants to coach. Uh, we've talked about that before, too. It's a long season. 
they're they're together an awful lot of time, and then he just doesn't want to coach somebody he doesn't enjoy being around. And he has been vocal about that over and over and over again. Like, I've got to know you and understand you, and you've got to know and understand me, and we got to meet together and hang out and, and get what each other's doing. Coach, this brings up one final question I want to ask before we before we move on to our next segment. And that is, if you find yourself in a situation where, let's say, I'll just use me, so we're not having to use any actual players. Let's say I'm a rising junior at the University of North Carolina, I'm expecting, I'm pretty short. So let's say I'm expecting to be the starting point guard next year. And you coach Bill Robinson are my head coach. And you find out that player X is in the transfer portal and ultimately decide we're going to bring him in. And he's probably going to be our starting point guard over Isaac shade. How would you come have that conversation with me to say, Hey, basically we're recruiting over you, but this is for the good of the team. Yeah, that's a tough conversation to have. And it, you just got to be up front and saying, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're bringing in some talent. We've got to get better. Uh, we've got to get deeper. And uh, it's, it's wide open. Talk about it in the summer. The position's wide open. We haven't made any decisions yet. You have every opportunity to prove that this spot's yours. And if you do, you're going to play. And, and this is what Hubert's talking about, too. He can go to a kid and say, listen, this here's the situation. But keep in mind, I love you. I love your parents. I love your, your family. I love everything about you. I want you to succeed. You still have to prove it to everybody else. Play so well that we have to put you on the floor. And those are the only conversations that you can have. And, and when it comes down to, to the depth, who's better? And every day has got to be a battle. And I think that's what he's looking for. Yeah. And what I love is that when Hubert Davis says that, it's true, and he means it from the bottom of his heart about that love and care and consideration. Whereas some coaches might say that, and you're like, dude, you're just blowing smoke. I don't believe a word of that that you're saying. And again, this is part of why we love uh, Hubert Davis, both as a basketball coach and just as a human being. He's a good and decent person. And that's why parents want to send their young men to play for him. So, coach, in this day and age, we're talking about recruiting. You got to be really careful with how you treat all high school recruits, but in particular, the ones that you don't get. Why? We'll talk about that coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you about Yahoo Finance, you all know that I love numbers, I love stats, and but here's the thing, it doesn't apply to just sports. I also really enjoy keeping tabs on how my investments are doing, how my retirement stuff's doing. And honestly, I used to track all of that by myself in a whole bunch of different spreadsheets. And then finally, one day, my financial advisor, his name's Chris, and he said to me, hey, Isaac, you know all that that you're doing? I do all of that in one place, and it's Yahoo Finance. I checked it out. <laughs> I'm so mad that I never knew about it sooner. I'm so thankful now that I use Yahoo Finance as a one-stop shop to keep track of it all. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. So whether you're a seasoned investor looking for that extra guidance or you know what you're doing, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. You can securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of all your wealth. That comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and that's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. That's yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. One more time, visit yahoofinance.com. The transfer portal has instituted all sorts of crazy things into college athletics. But one of them is uh, the idea of how you go about handling high school recruiting now. And so coach, basically the, the thought I want to put on this segment is burn or burn bridges. I already said it backwards coach. I've already screwed it up. Build bridges. Don't burn them. And here's why coach. So often, you know, a fan base, doesn't land a train or uh, doesn't land a high school recruit and they get all bent out of shape, jump into their DMS and poo poo and bowed mouth and bemoan them. And it's like, y'all that, that ain't it. So coach in this day and age, why is it so critically important for coaching staffs and fan bases to build bridges in high school recruiting instead of burning them? Well, the first one obviously is uh, with kids hitting the portal as quickly as they do. Now you won't maybe get a rebound kid. Uh, so if you have a kid that you really love 
Uh, we lost a kid this year, high school kid, loved him. Kid can really play. Uh, we lost him. We came in second. Coming in second is the worst. And, you know, it, it's it's just a horrible feeling. Uh, but the as long as everything goes well and, and the kid doesn't burn any bridges, as you say, and you still have a relationship with that family, um, the line is, hey, man, you know, sorry to hear that. Uh, we wish you the best. We'll be keeping an eye on you. And they know what that means. We know what that means. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to be calling them or texting them. We can't do that. That's not it. But you are going to check box scores. You are going to check stats. You're going to find out, you know, how that kid's doing and 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 just keeping an eye and waiting. If that kid does have a bad year, if the team has a bad year and he wants to win, you're just ready for that call. So that's the first one. The second one is is something I don't think you you maybe even anticipate. But uh, we've had kids that we've lost along the way that have we become friends with that all of a sudden they get in the coaching world. Now, all of a sudden, they're a high school coach. Now, all of a sudden, you've developed a relationship with them. And now, uh, because you did things the right way, you're able to, to hey, you know, we're still friends. We really got that in that bad vibe. And now, all of a sudden, they'll say, hey, yeah, you know, maybe your school's an option for my kid down the road. It could be 5, 10, 15 years down the road for somebody that you didn't even coach. Maybe you coached the game, but yet you still have a relationship, even if it was as an opponent, um, and still be able to build relationships like that. I've actually had two or three guys that I coached against that have actually asked to come to Carolina camp because I hard. They were good kids, coaching world. They're young. They they want to be able to connect and network. Here's a perfect way for them to to really meet a bunch of people. And if I can help bridge that, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I'm a connector when it really comes down to it. Uh, you know, I've probably had 40 or 50 guys over the last five years that I've been able to introduce to Carolina camp because, uh, you know, Brad Frederick, you know, Sean May, those guys, their contacts are all D1 guys, you know, and they can't work, you know, D1 can't work another D1 camp. So they look at me and say, hey, can you get me some guys? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I got one right now, a kid that I lost uh, recruiting battle in high school. He's getting ready to graduate. I would invite him in a heartbeat. If, if Coach Frederick can, contacts me tomorrow and says, hey, I need an extra guy, He's somebody I would take. So there's a lot of multiple things that you think about. Uh, that's why you always want to treat people the right way because you never know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, Coach, you're absolutely right. I did not think about that angle or that answer, but it's brilliant. I mean, it makes total sense of like, hey, I'm. what is my job? To get players off of high school basketball teams. And if somebody that I don't land goes to be a high school basketball coach and they remember good things about me and my program, boom. We're in that kitchen, right? And so I, I love that idea, Coach. And by the way, hopefully, whoever that graduate is uh, is listening to this show. And whoever you are, you know it. You got maybe an opportunity waiting for you. And for for those of you listening, look, you know, as somebody who knows Coach Rob personally and firsthand, and has seen this connection firsthand, that he's absolutely right. And Coach, that I, I think that's why people love and gravitate toward you so much is you don't hold anything like. Uh, privileged or like, Hey, check me out. And what I, it's like, you want to share the community and the opportunities you have. And, and I think that speaks so much volume about you and your character. So thank you for that example and who you are. I love that. Um, and coach, you know, bringing this all back around to the Carolina side of things in, in terms of recruiting, what we talked about earlier this week is that Carolina has now offered 13 scholarships in the class of 2025. It actually might be up to 14 now because there was another one late Tuesday night, but I can't remember off the top of my, I haven't talked about him on the show yet. So I can't remember if he was 25 or 26, but anyway, it's in the teens. And so coach, obviously you're not going to get even close to a majority. of you, you celebrate if you get one, two, three of these kids from the class of 2025, but with all of them, they're all people that you talk about a rebound kid. It's like, Hey, if, and when the time's right, you go somewhere and it doesn't work. You remember our, our recruiting together. And this is a good place to come be. What's up Harrison Ingram, by the way, what a great example of that. And so coach, as you look at this class that has 13, 14 offers in it right now, eight of them, which are consensus top 10 kids in the class, what, what do you think that Coach Davis is trying to accomplish by casting such a wide net? Yeah, and I think he's starting to get out in front of it a little bit more than he, and maybe in the past. I, I think he just feels like he has to do that. I don't think it's any desperation. I think it's just a philosophy, maybe change. I don't think it's a big change, 
But hey, if, if, if this is the way the world's going to be, let's go out and get ahead of it. Let's go ahead and make a bunch of offers and see if we can nail down a couple of the kids that they really, really want. Uh, it is dangerous. And uh, I know one situation that uh, Joe Holiday talked about with me, but uh, they made it. Uh, this is Roy Williams era. They made a, an offer uh, to multiple guys early on, including two sets of twins. Um, or not one set of twins and then a, a group of brothers that were all from the same family. And um, the Ware twins accepted before the Plumley blood, blood uh, the Plumley <laughs> brothers said yes. And apparently the Plumley brothers were really leaning towards Carolina, according to Joe Holiday. Um, but since the Ware twins took it, they ended up going to that other school that we don't talk about. Uh, so it is kind of it's it's dangerous when you think about some of that stuff. But if you have kids that are obviously top 10 type players, um, you're going to take whoever, you know, out of that group. You're going to you're going to get who, you know, it, it's not a hard decision. Man, uh, look, obviously, I think we're inclined to dislike the Plumleys because of where they ended up. But if you can rewind your brain to before they were committed to Duke. You absolutely would take the Plumleys over the Weird Twins every day and twice on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, recruiting is just a fickle mistress at times. Coach, is there like it's something I've thought about, and then I actually heard somebody else talk about it on on another podcast, not on ours. Uh, and I can't remember where it was now. If if so, I would shout them out. But this idea of like. Could you create almost like a pipeline with a, a mid-major or a low-major program to say, hey, look, you know, if if you've got guys that you think should transfer up to the high-major level, just, you know, we'd love it if you'd, you know, you don't have to say go to Carolina, but if you could speak a good word to them about us. And similarly, if we've got somebody transferring down, uh, you know, we, we uh, definitely can nudge them your direction too. Do you, th I mean, is there, is that, such a crazy thing to have that process of reciprocity. Well, there's definitely pipelines when it comes to AAU programs or high school programs. Um, I've got a former player of mine, um, Frankie Canador, who has sent me multiple players over the years. And he knows the type of kid we're looking for from athletically, obviously, but also from academic and spiritually. So you, you want to you have somebody you trust and know. I mean, I only have to go down and look at his guys. He's got a kid right now that we like a lot. And uh, he says, hey, he's good. He can play for you. I, that's all I need. Wow. You know, so I need extra eyes out there, especially in a situation that we're in where we have two full-time staff. We need somebody out there with eyes on it. So uh, it's always good to have a JUCO coach. You maybe get your pipeline that way too. Um, we have an AAU coach that we've just gotten connected with in the last year that has been trying to push some guys towards us. So I think it's harder when you're talking about another D1 program. Sure. Maybe if you have somebody like a Jackie Manuel, who goes to another school, goes to an American. Maybe he has somebody that uh, in their program, or maybe he's got an extra set of eyes for somebody in the league. And if they have a great player in the league that he can go, just make a phone call and say, hey, you need to check this kid out at, he just lit us up tonight. You really need to keep your eye on him. He's young and he can really play. I think that's more of, of where the tools will be. Um, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, Jack Frost, my, one of my former assistants, he's now at University of Denver. Uh, since Jared got uh, let go at, at Stanford, he's going to see talent out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if he sees a kid and says, man, this kid's really good. I could see him getting on the phone, you know, and calling Carolina and said, hey, here's one of you guys that you really need to just keep an eye out in case he does enter the portal in the future. I mean, heck, it sounds like Jerry Stackhouse has done some of that with Van Allen Leuven of like trying to push him to Carolina a little bit out of Andy. So, yeah, that's a really interesting uh, viewpoint on that coach as well. Well, friends, it comes to one of my favorite points of the week when we have Coach Rob on the show. It's going to be story time. Coach Rob is working on a book of all the great stories that he's experienced over the past two decades at Carolina Summer Basketball Camp. He's going to share another one of those coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you about FanDuel, it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Right now, FanDuel has the Eastern Conference Finals odds, Pacers plus 980, 
Celtics minus 1,800. I saw this one on there, Coach, too. You can bet on the exact order of who wins each game of the series and how many there will be. That, that was a pretty cool outside-the-box idea. I love it. So if you want to get in on that action, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's story time with Coach Rob. Can't wait for that. But Coach, I have an off-the-cuff question that I wasn't prepared for, but just talking about the Eastern Conference Finals in that FanDuel read made me think of this. Uh, folks, for those of you that watched that game, we know that uh, Celtics came back from the brink of death in game one, forced overtime and won it. And it was because the Pacers didn't foul up three. Coach, are you a foul up three kind of guy? I was not as a young coach. I am now. And it, it is one moment in time that changed my whole philosophy. I was at a, a clinic in the University of Florida, but Billy Donovan, that's how long ago it was. And Milligan alum, Del Harris was there. And everybody's having this conversation. Del raises his hand and Billy Donovan says, yes, Coach Harris. He goes, you foul every time because that's what the media thinks you're supposed to do. And I promise you, ever since I've, I have fouled. Now, in that situation, the guy's in a deep corner. He, he was in a lot of trouble. But if your philosophy is foul, when he caught the ball, regardless of where he is, you just foul. Yep. And I think that's what I, I would if, – if, that's what I would have wanted to do as a coach. I think that's what the locker room conversation was afterwards. But, man, he made a great shot. And once that momentum – once that shot went in, I turned the game off. I knew the Celtics were going to win. So <laughs> uh, I didn't even watch overtime. Yes, I agree. Oh, exactly. Except um, that didn't happen for the Tar Heels in 2016. So there's that. Because okay. um, <laughs> I, I was the same thing. I was like, oh, Marcus hit that shot. Ball game. Carolina's winning. And it didn't work. All right, folks. Let me not let us allow us to. That sentence didn't make any sense at all. Let us not dwell on that too long. Let's get to story time with Coach Rob. Coach, take it away. I got a good one tonight. It's from my friend Mark Isley. He, uh, he was a head manager for Dean Smith. That's how old this story is. Uh, he went on to, to teach at Southern Alamance Middle School for 30 years before retiring. Uh, he was the, the head of the dorm staff for 20 years. And Dean Smith, his big message to the dorm staff was, you know, the most important thing is to make sure we return the kids to their parents safely, the same way that they came. That's priority number one. Teaching basketball and having fun are uh, you know, two or three, but option one, we absolutely have to make sure we return the kids to their parents safely. Um, and he always knew what was going on. So this back in the day, they didn't have quite as many dorm staff as they do now. You can't go around the corner around the dorm without running into door, dorm staff now. Everywhere you look, there's dorm staff. Uh, but one night they were going through dorm checks, bed checks, and found out that there were two kids missing. And if you know anything about Chapel Hill, Franklin Street's the place to be. You know, everybody wants to be on Franklin Street, and that's where all the restaurants are. And these two kids had snuck out to go get some food. Uh, but they weren't the normal kids. They weren't just anybody's kids. Um, over the years, they've had Jack Nicholas's son. They've had Denzel Washington's kids. They had, I mean, son. They've had uh, the lead singer from Earth, Wind, and Fire's son. I mean, you've had all these. And we talked about Joe Montana in the past. And, you know, I've got all these kids. Well, these two kids happen to be Dr. J's sons. So not only did they lose two kids, but they lost Dr. J's kids. <laughs> but you want to talk about a phone call going out or they had walkie talkies back then and said, we need all hands on deck. We need to go find these kids. And of course, by the time they got everybody to the lobby and headed towards Franklin Street, here are the two guys come back walking with food in their hands like, what? What, what, what did we do? We were just hungry. We went to go get something to eat. So oh. um, safety first, always. Uh, but especially if it's a kid that's really important, you just got to make sure that kid doesn't get out of the dorm, no matter what. Can you imagine? Uh, no, me, I can't this, imagine. Is this Julius? Uh, I've got an issue here. <laughs> your boys it's are 30 and we can't find your kids. <laughs> oh, my word. That's why. Wait, okay. Denzel's son. Is it the one who's like the big time actor himself now? not even sure which one it is. I, I did know that they asked me as a I'm the college coach to come talk to a group one night. I wasn't working in the main gym. I was in a different gym. Came back to do a little recruiting and watch the uh, Carolina guys play at night. And they say, hey, would you come talk to this group about what you're looking for uh, as a college recruiter when you walk into a gym? I said, yeah. So I went ahead and talked to this group. Never knew that Denzel's son was in that group. Um, but you, you just never know. We had Jerry Stackhouse's son. Uh, it was funny because this 
at the time, the kid was really short. And I, I said, why is that kid in the gym? He's really tiny. They said, it's Jerry's son. Oh, okay. Oh. That's good. That's fine. He, he's welcome to stay. And he was good. I mean, he was a good player, but he was just, he was just young. Uh, he just looked a little young to be in the gym. But, yeah, you just never know. That's why you always treat everybody uh, super well, and, and you want to make sure that you uh, call the games the way you're supposed to call the games, and everybody has a good time. So, I love it. Well, folks, we are just, by the way, a couple weeks away from camp, and we know we're going to have some great uh, stories yet again from this summer. Can't wait for all the games Coach will get to see amongst alumni and others and uh, you know we're gonna have some great reports from that so stay tuned for all that coming up not too far away from now it's wild coach thanks for yet another fun story you love to hear those all right gang if you're not part of the locked on tar heels discord community man we'd love to have you the link is in the show notes it's free to join this community if you're not in you got to do it right now come for the tar heels stay for the community if you haven't subscribed to the show on audio and video go ahead and do that Hey, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll talk again tomorrow to wrap up the week, but until then, peace.